In this video, we're going to learn about how to write a lab report. And you'll see that some of the parts of a lab report have to be done before you've done your investigation. And then the rest of them will be done after you've finished doing your experiment. And it'll teach you how to collate all your, your data and present it in a way that is meaningful to a reader who wants to find out more about your experiment. So the first part of the lab report is the purpose, or sometimes we call it the focus question. So imagine that we were doing an experiment where we were dropping Alka-Seltzer into different temperatures of water. So a good focus question or purpose would be, how does raising the temperature of the water affect how quickly an Alka-Seltzer dissolves in water? The next component of the lab report would be to write a hypothesis. And again, this will be written before you do your experiment. So a hypothesis is an explained prediction. So you're making a guess, but it's an educated guess about what you think is going to happen. And you're also going to use some of your background knowledge and what you already know to help explain your hypothesis. So if we were doing the Alka-Seltzer experiment, you might say that your hypothesis would be increasing the temperature will speed up how quickly the tablet dissolves. And the reason you would say that is because the particles will be moving faster, so they're going to be more likely to break up into smaller bits. The third thing you need to have on your lab report would be identifying the variables. And remember, there's three different types of variables. So the independent variable is the variable that you're changing. So in this Alka-Seltzer experiment, the independent variable would be the temperature of the water. And if you wanted to be even more detailed, you would say what temperatures you were going to be using in your experiment. So you might start from 10 degrees, and every 10 degrees you would have a different uh, trial up until, say, 60 degrees Celsius. And then your dependent variable is what you're measuring or what you're looking for. So in this case, we want to know our dependent variable will be how long it takes for the tablet to dissolve. And you would measure that in seconds or minutes or whatever would be a reasonable time for that. And then finally, your controlled variables are everything that you're going to keep consistent between trials. So some examples would be you would keep the volume of the water that you're using the same. You would keep the size of the tablet the same. You would keep this, the fact that the tablet is in a whole piece versus broken up into little pieces the same. The size of the container. All of those things would be examples of controlled variables. The next thing that you're going to include in your lab report would be a list of all the materials that you used in your experiment. And you want to put them into a nice list form so that somebody else reading your lab report would be able to collect all your materials and repeat your experiment. So we want our materials and our procedure written in such a way that somebody else could come along, complete the experiment, follow your instructions, and get the same results that you did. So in this experiment, I would say that I wanted a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. I would need some water. I would need maybe 10 Alka-Seltzer tablets and then 10 test tubes and a thermometer and all the other materials that I might need for the experiment would be listed in my materials list. Your procedure is the step-by-step -step instructions for doing your experiment. And again, you want to be as specific as possible so that somebody else could read that procedure and follow it perfectly and get the same results as you did. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can write it in a paragraph form, but the way I like to do it is more in a numbered list. So step one, do this, and then step two, do that. So in this example, the first few steps that I put down would be to measure out 25 milliliters of room temperature water and to pour it into the first test tube would be your first step. Then you would measure the temperature of the water with the thermometer and you would record it in your observation table. Your third step would be to drop an Alka-Seltzer tablet into the test tube and then time how long it takes for it to dissolve. And then you would record that into your observation table as well. And you would make sure that you're recording qualitative and quantitative observations. And then the list would continue until you wrote down all the steps of your experiment. So while you're conducting your experiment, you're going to record some observations. 
And remember, you want to record both qualitative and quantitative observations. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. You could put it in paragraph form and just list all the things that you observe throughout the experiment. Or you might want to put it in a table form like I've done here. And you might find that a table form is a little bit more organized. It keeps everything very neat and tidy. Um, but you can record your observations in paragraph form as well. So if you see here, the very first column is the water temperature. So that would be my independent variable. So we use 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 and 40. And then the second column is how long it took for the tablets to dissolve. So that would be my quantitative observations. So you can see at 10 degrees, 45 seconds was the length of time it took for the tablet to dissolve and so on. And then our final column over here is a description of what happened. So those will be my qualitative observations. So at 10 degrees, it took 45 seconds for the tablet to dissolve. And I noticed that it fizzed and bubbled and that the tablet slowly disappeared. And then I recorded observations for each of the temperatures. And that would be my qualitative and quantitative observations presented in a table. The next thing you need to record is your analysis of your results. So this is where you would do a calculation or make a graph with your data. Uh, so I decided to make a graph, a scatter plot of the temperature and how long it took for each of the tablets to dissolve. So I've made points along the way to show that, like here and here and so on. So we can see that as the temperature increases, the time it takes for the tablet to dissolve decreases. So it definitely does speed up the rate of reaction. Our final steps of our experimental lab report would be to write a conclusion and an evaluation section. So for this, I'll, I'm going to separate them, but you can have them in the same section. So first of all, the conclusion is your summary of the results, and then you're going to talk about whether or not your results were supported by your, your hypothesis, and if they were, discuss that. And if they weren't, which is totally okay, give some reasons why you think they didn't match. So for this one, my results did support the hypothesis. So the hotter the temperature, the faster the tablet dissolved. And you want to make sure that you're referring back to your tables and your graph and your observations. So I made a statement there. So I said, as you can see on the graph, when the temperature was low, it took much longer for the tablet to completely dissolve. And I would go on to talk about some of the other data points to show that I understand that my results are being supported by my hypothesis. Now the evaluation section is evaluating your procedure. So you're taking a look at you know, were there some errors that I did or my partner and I did during the experiment that could have made some you know, results not turn out the way we should have? Um, and then providing suggestions of how we could approve that. So I came up with one for this one. So I wrote down one error we could have made was with the timer. It was hard to start the timer at the same time as the person dropping the tablet. And an improvement would be to count down before dropping the tablet into the test tube so that the tablet and the timer are starting at the same time. So that would be an example of an evaluation of one of the errors in the lab. So that's how you write a lab report. Now one thing that I haven't mentioned yet that's worth noting is that all of these sections that we have talked about, I gave a title and underlined it just to make it neat for the reader and to have the reader understand where all the parts of the lab report are. Um, and we tend to write them in the order that we've just gone through. So you start with your procedure, you start follow that with your hypothesis, and then your variables, your list of materials, your procedure, your observations, your analysis, and then finally your conclusion and evaluation. You need to write a lab report in the order that things happen. So that's how you do a lab report.